But thank you for having us today. What do you do for a living? Well, for the last 25 years or so, I have been director of the French House, which allows me actually to teach one or two classes at the university, and I usually teach an advanced language or literature class. I'm also an academic advisor for students of French, and then I get to manage the French house, which is, makes me somewhat like a small business owner, restaurant manager, um, residence hall coordinator, um, toilet unplugger sometimes, everything. I get to do everything here. What is the Maison Française? The French house was started in 1918 as a place on campus where students could come and either have a meal in French or live in French and sleep in French because the faculty at the time in our department, and they still are today, were very forward-thinking and they thought that their students needed an immersion experience. A um, hundred years later, the French House still does that. We um, have meals open to the public as well as to the students um, all throughout the week. It's a way for them to stay in touch with the French language because I would say a good half of our residents are not students of French. They're students who are studying something else on campus and they want to keep up their French and they do so by living here. Have you ever studied abroad? If yes, what did that experience teach you? So I first studied abroad when I was a junior in high school. I spent the, a semester in Paris and I was able to attend the Institut des études politiques and a few other um, institutes in Paris. I think the, what it taught me most was how to be independent, um, how to take care of myself, how to figure things out for myself. Unlike um, the American school system, I wasn't held by the hand the whole time, so I needed to you know, figure things out. So it taught me to be independent, taught me to be frugal, because Paris was pretty expensive. So I learned how to um, appreciate the city that I was in without spending a lot of money, and I still do that today. Um, what else did it teach me? Of course, it taught me how to look at my world from very different perspectives. I met so many different people. Paris is such an international city. So not only did I meet French people, but I met people from around the world. And I became accustomed to very different ways of looking at things, which really helped me a lot. What is your favorite place to visit in France? Marseille, because it teaches me how to live differently how to be less uh, coincé, like I might be accused of being sometimes, and, and to let myself kind of just follow myself around and, and discover things as I go. And it's um, the, the amount of construction that has happened in Marseille in the last five or ten years has turned that city um, into a much more easier place to discover. There's more museums to see. There's more restaurants, so I'm really enjoying discovering Marseille. What is your favorite French food? I think my favorite thing to have in France is when someone cooks a fish. And I have to explain that in the United States, we cook fish. You have some fish or fish. and But we do, in the United States, cook a turkey, which is a big event. And so in France, the first time I had someone cook a fish and it came out as a fish with all the herbs around it and then we cut into and served it in, in morsels and, and I had never had anything so delicious I don't think in my life. What is such a French habit in your opinion? I'm not sure if this is a habit or more of a fear but many French people seem to be afraid of les courants d'air, drafts and I've actually been in places that have been very warm where we couldn't open two windows in the same room for fear we would create a courant d'air in the room, so um, I think that's one of the one of the habits or fears that I find kind of funny. Um, some others, I know the French are much better than me at making faces um, when they talk, um, which I, I'm not even going to try to imitate because I can't do it, but they have lots of jests, lots of faces that they make. They're very, very, very good at not using the word money and not asking about money in order to find out everything they need to know about money. And they use certain uh, code words like intéressant to talk about a good price on something. Um, and they ask, you know, maybe what region or what neighborhood you live in, and eventually they find out everything they need to know, just like we do in America. But we're just a little bit more frank and maybe a little bit more gauche up front. We'll say, how much did that cost? And uh, whereas the French will find that out in the course of a few or a few questions. What are you looking for next? So the French House is in the midst of a fundraising campaign right now. We are taking what is our dining room and making it much more than a dining room. We're, we use it already for classroom space, 
but it's very hard to use that space. We have to cobble together things like screens and wires and, and speakers and things like that. And, and we have to move tables around. And so we're going to make it so it's much more adaptable to that type of a learning environment. But, um, and we're going to expand it as well. So we take advantage of the lake view that we have and be able to actually sit more along the lake and have a terrace outside of that as well. But um, more importantly, I think we're also going to open it up to the public all day long so people can come here anytime during the day from you know morning time through the evening and either just have a coffee or a pastry or a tea or they can have a meal and everything's going to happen in French we will have um, some of our French graduate students who will be here throughout the day to serve as tutors um, writing center um, assistants as well and um, then we're going to continue to have our classes and maybe some more events down there as well